Today on People Now, Neil Diamond announces his retirement from touring in the wake of a Parkinson's disease diagnosis. We have details. Busy Phillips flies to be with her BFF Michelle Williams on the anniversary of Heath Ledger's death. This is Us star Susan Kelechi Watson talks about that big SAG Awards win and dressing the same as Mandy Moore and Chrissy Metz at the events. The brother of that House of Horrors mom says she always wanted a big family as we gain more insight into the parents involved in that alleged horrific abuse. Ari Leindijk Jr. is getting closer to finding love, but some tempers are flaring as things heat up on The Bachelor. We're breaking it all down on today's show. Plus, John Legend, Chrissy Teigen, and Spandex. Another swoon-worthy and hilarious moment from our favorite Hollywood couple. And it's one of the biggest days in award season. The Oscar nominations are this morning. And we'll tell you who is up for this year's top honors. And Damon John is talking Shark Tank and his brand new book, live today on People Now. Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to People Now. In just a little bit, we are breaking down some major revelations and shocking moments from last night's episode of The Bachelor. So we want you to tell us what your favorite OMG moment from last night's episode was. You can tweet us at people or using the hashtag people now. There are a lot to choose from, frankly. Uh, first, here's what you need to know and what is trending today. Watch. Sweet Caroline singer Neil Diamond will no longer be touring due to his recent diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. The Grammy-winning artist, who turned 77 years old on January 24th, announced his illness on his website on Monday, sharing the news with his fans and saying, in part, I've been so honored to bring my shows to the public for the past 50 years. My sincerest apologies to everyone who purchased tickets and were planning to come to the upcoming shows. In his statement, the singer explained the disease has made it difficult to travel and perform on a large scale, uh, but he will continue continue to write, record, and develop new projects. Diamond has sold over 130 million albums, is a rock and roll hall of famer, and just performed on New Year's Eve in Times Square during Fox's special with Steve Harvey. The Recording Academy will honor Diamond with its prestigious Lifetime Achievement Award during the Grammy Awards on January 28th. Well, guys, newly engaged royal princess Eugenie showed off one sparkly ring on Monday. The 27-year-old granddaughter of Queen Elizabeth joined fiancé Jack Brooksbank to talk all about their romantic engagement, revealing the proposal still came as a shock even after seven years of dating. Brooksbank, a brand ambassador for Casamigos Tequila, opened up about choosing the stunning ring and how he knew it was perfect for his soon-to-be bride. Uh, I found a ring in a jeweler's mm -hmm. um, and um, then proposed to Eugenie without it uh, and came back and we designed a ring or designed the diamonds around uh, this um, pad paracha uh, sapphire. Mm -hmm. um, and what's amazing about it is it um, changes color. Why I loved it so much is it because it changes color uh, from every different angle that you look at it, uh, which is what um, we think, what I think of Eugenie, uh, that she changes color and is just so amazing. Uh, and we thought that, that was an amazing Sign. There you go. Uh, and the happy couple says the queen was especially excited over the news. Eugenie revealing that she was one of the first people to find out. Um, and Granny actually knew right at the beginning. Um, she was one of the very few people at the beginning. And we left her this weekend and had a lovely time. And she was very happy, as was my grandfather. What did um, she say to you, Jack? Um, that she was incredibly happy um, and wished us well, which is amazing. It was very, very nice that she was so happy for us. Always nice to have the Queen's approval for something like that, right? Very happy for those two. And now we switch gears to this. Louise Turpin, the mother accused of abusing her 13 children in a house of horrors in California, dreamed of having a 14th child with her husband, David. This according to her half-brother, Billy Lambert, who tells People that his sister always wanted a big family. In fact, Lambert says that Louise, who had her first child at age 20, had always admired Kate Goslin, who was a mother of sex tuplets and twin daughters, and thought her TLC series, Kate Plus Eight, was, quote, a cool reality show. Lambert adds, quote, I think deep down that is what she wanted. He says his half-sister allegedly told him that she had already discussed having another child with her doctor, and in their last phone conversation, she told Lambert that her husband was looking into purchasing a school bus because their 15-seat van was filling up. According to investigators, Louise and David have 13 children ranging in ages from 2 to 29. The pair was taken into custody after one of their kids, a 17-year-old girl, escaped the home on January 14th and called 911. Authorities said they found the Turpin children severely malnourished from lack of food. 
with some in chains. The couple pled not guilty to their charges, which uh, include torture, abuse of, of a dependent adult, child abuse or neglect, and false imprisonment. As for Lambert, he says he has disowned Luis because, quote, she had hurt the family, not just herself and the kids. We, he says we have had numerous people sending us crazy messages saying that we knew, if we knew, we would have stopped it ourselves. And anyone with further information about the Turpin family is urged to call 888-934-KIDS. And now we move on to this. True friendship knows no distance, and no one is better proof of that than actress Busy Phillips, who took a flight to be with her best friend Michelle Williams on the 10-year anniversary of Heath Ledger's death. On Monday evening, Phillips shared this photo of a breathtaking sunset through an airplane window. The photo coming up here, captioning the whole thing with a red heart emoji. There it is. Then hours later, she posted a selfie showing her Dawson's Creek co-star Williams with her eyes closed and leaning on her longtime confidant. She captioned that photo with, it's okay. Ledger and Williams dated after meeting on the set of their 2005 film Brokeback Mountain and welcomed their daughter Matilda in October 2005. They separated in September 2007, just four months before Ledger would be found dead from an accidental overdose in his New York City apartment. He was only 28 years old. Such a tragic story even, even now, so many years later. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, you know, time has passed, but obviously time heals, but anniversaries are the toughest. For sure. So I do like that they have that friendship because you need to be close with friends and family in yeah. those anniversaries. Good support there. And guys, we're going to check in with you in that question of the day. We asked you guys what's your favorite OMG moment from last night's Bachelor episode. It was a good one. Um, Ashley said, I can't believe it. Becca M is only 22. That was the big shocker from last night. It was a reveal. A lot of people <laughs> making a big deal of it. We're going to break it down in a bit. Shay says, I can't stand when Crystal complained to Ari about the other girls who does that. People and, are not liking Crystal. And that never goes well. It never no. helps to do no. that. So we go to the social computer here for more. Hashtag The Bachelor, Ari's hands on Becca's tiny head. It does sound like a really small. <laughs> and then also at one point, his, his fingers were through her hoop earrings and everyone was freaking out. Um, Jesse says, bring your daughter to work day. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, we'll see if the age thing ends up being as big of a deal as everyone's making it out 14 years, to I don't know. It's something. We're gonna and we've, we're breaking. We've got our panel ready. Our, yeah. our bachelor veterans are here, so we're, we're gonna talk to them in a bit. But guys, keep your comments coming in. We're gonna check in with you again soon. But Andrea, you have more for us to start. Yes, yeah, so you were at the SAG Awards. I was. Yes. Well, fresh off her win from Sunday Night SAG Awards, we are kicking off Star Tracks with one of her favorite TV stars. NBC's This Is Us made a huge splash at this year's SAG Awards, beating out top shows like Game of Thrones and The Handmaid's Tale for best TV ensemble in a drama series. Well, Susan Kalechi Watson plays the always feisty Beth Pearson and explains exactly why the cast was so pumped for this honor. Because of my ensemble, I really wanted that for this particular group. Like of all the awards, actually, I was like, wow, the ensemble, that just, because I just feel like each person on our show just brings 100% of themselves all the time. Like nobody phones anything in and everybody's always trying their best. And so it felt really good to celebrate with, with them and like we're all so proud of it and, and it feels like we go to all these award shows and they all feel really great to go to so you think getting nominated is like this mm -hmm. is fantastic okay cool we didn't get it <laughs> but all right but we get it and it's like a whole nother level of like something we didn't even know we would feel you know so they announced our names and i like jumped out of my skin because i was just so excited and i don't know if you expect it or you don't the moment is like so blurry you just kind of wait for them to call it and then they call your name and it's like oh my god so I thought we were gonna hug until our time ran out. I was like, we have to get on the stage, guys. Like, <laughs> we were sitting there hugging. I was like, we only have 45 seconds. But, um, but it was good, it was great. It felt really good. It sounds like quite the night, but there was one pretty hilarious coincidence after Susan, Mandy Moore, and Chrissy Metz all showed up in the same colored gown. Say what? Well, I was sitting at the table because I had gotten to the table at SAG first and I was sitting there and kind of eating. Chrissy comes up behind me. She's like, hey, Sue, look. And I'm like, oh my God. So I'm like, girl, this is so cool. She's like, I was going to wear this to another event, but she changed her mind and she uh -huh. wore it to this. And I said, she said, Mandy's wearing blue too. I said, oh really? And I didn't think it was the same blue. Mandy comes in, loses her mind. She's like, oh my God. So we just start selfieing each other. And then all of a sudden there was this moment where Cam was just around selfieing, you know, taking pictures of us, taking selfies of one another. And we got on our Insta stories, literally the moment where we discovered we were all wearing the same color and we had not planned it at all. There's like, we like the so Supremes or something. crazy, yeah. Crazy. And while we're talking statement making style, Susan also opened up about the Time's Up movement and how wearing all black to the 2018 Golden Globes was one powerful experience. It was just a powerful thing for everybody to come together. And the fact that people, men, women alike, 
uh, are passionate about this, there being a change, you know, that women would be respected and these harassment and, you know, abuse would not be something that's expected in order for you to get to where you need to go in your career. But it's something now that should be the new, you know, the new standard. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm really proud of the women who are coming forward and, say, and being courageous enough to say anything. And also that people are now listening, you know? Love her. Nice to see her right after that award win. And guys, the Oscar nominations are underway. Let's listen in. Edith and Eddie. <laughs> is a traffic jam on the 405. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so guys, right now we're watching the 90th annual Oscar nominations. They're happening nice live skills. in LA right now. Uh, we've already seen a lot of the technical categories style. announced. Some of the larger uh, and acting All categories will be announced here in this final round. So let's continue to watch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just saying. No, I'm totally up with you. <laughs> For best documentary feature, Abacus, small enough to jail. <laughs> Faces, places. Andy Circus. Icarus. Last men in Aleppo. And Strong Island. For original song, Mighty River from Mudbound. Mystery of Love from Call Me By Your Name. Remember Me from Coco. Stand Up For Something from Marshall. All right, guys, at the 90th Annual Academy Award uh, nominations underway there. The show's going to be on March 4th, hosted by Jimmy Kimmel. We're excited for that. Yeah. We've seen a lot of the technical awards already. Uh, Blade Runner coming in with a lot of those technical awards. People mm -hmm. uncertain about whether or not it'll receive any nominations on the acting side, but a lot there for Dunkirk as well in The Shape of Water. Mary J. Blige for Supporting Actress was on, uh, and Allison Janney as well um, being honored in the Supporting Actress category with a nomination. Mm -hmm. um, I saw Willem Dafoe there as well as Woody Harrelson. A lot of, uh, in yeah, a lot of them coming. Yeah, and of course, uh, Tiffany Haddish and Andy Serkis were doing those announcements there. And I think we're going to be really excited, especially as the big ones come in. Yeah, for sure. And we're going to uh, check back in later on in the show. We'll give you a recap mm -hmm. of those big categories and who the nominees are for the Oscars yes. this year. But this we're going to keep going gonna, with uh, Star Trek. Yeah, we're going to go back to Hoda, so let's watch this. One day I was sitting with my boyfriend and I said to him, I I'm going to have to talk to you about something because I can't push it down anymore, push it away. I said, don't answer now. Take a day, take a week, take some time. I said, but I want to talk to you about this. And he said, okay, like, what is it? And I said, um, I would like to explore adoption with you. Keep in mind, he has a daughter who's in law school. He's a, you know, he's in, you know, he's a guy who's about to turn 60. <clears throat> and he looked at me and he said, I don't need a day. Right then. Wow. I know, it totally changed. And I couldn't believe, and I knew I had chosen the right man. Such a cute story. So happy Hoda's found the right man. The 53-year-old Today Show anchor has been dating boyfriend Joel Schiffman for about four years now and was gushing about their life with daughter Haley on the Ellen DeGeneres show airing today. So if he's the right man, does that mean there's a wedding in Poppy's future? Here's what she said. Maybe. We might. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like I feel like everything's great. Like, you know, He's Haley's dad, you know, I'm Haley's mom, we're together. Yeah. I feel like there's not a rush other than we're old and we probably, if we're gonna do it, we might as well do it. But um, I, I think it's fun like this. I don't, yeah. I don't mind it. No, yeah. and it doesn't seem like you have to rush into that anyway. Like no. you take your time. Right, we're yeah. enjoying our lives. Yeah, I think we're good this way. That's all that matters. <laughs> John Legend continues to prove he's pretty much the best husband in the world. So he helped his pregnant wife, Chrissy Teigen, pull maternity spandex over her growing belly bump. I think he did a pretty good job helping there. The expecting parents were heading off to the Sundance Film Festival in Utah on Monday for the premiere of the upcoming film, Monster. John was the executive producer of the film, which is about a teenager charged with robbery and murder and ends up in juvenile detention. Now, Chrissy glammed up her turtleneck and leggings on the red carpet with a black knit poncho and leather pants.
and John kept it very dapper in a brown suede suit and black turtleneck. I guess the couple that gets ready together and puts maternity spandex on slays the red carpet together, right? <laughs> I think that's what they say. And those are your star tracks for today. Yeah, that is exactly what it takes <laughs> to keep it all together. Uh, stay with us, guys. We're breaking down that OMG age mystery moment from Monday Night's Bachelor. Plus, Britney Spears fans rejoice the pop star bringing her Piece of Me tour back, and we have all the details for that. We about that all day, love it all night, don't think about it. It's like a roller coaster through a relationship, really. It's um, all the stages of a relationship, uh, experiences that I've been through, my friends have been through, probably you guys at home have been through as well. That's the always vibrant Justine Skye telling us about the new music on her debut album, Ultraviolet, which just dropped Friday. Now, fans have known her from Tumblr as the Purple Unicorn, Yeah, fans have also know that she is tight with the Kardashian crew. Justine telling us who in the Kardashian Jenner clan has the most sway when we asked what they think of her new music. I mean, me and Kendall are like, that's my best friend, so. She's probably the first person to hear. Like, yeah, like she's always like giving me, she's kind of like my manager when, whenever I'm in the studio. She's like, who are you going to the studio with? <laughs> <laughs> and then she like comes and she said, she's like, I don't know about this person right here. Oh, really? yeah. <laughs> Locking on with their family, Kim, new baby. They've got the other pregnancies on the way. How's she gonna feel about all these new additions as they come into the, to the family? I mean, family's important, so I guess she's happy. Yeah. yeah, and even though Justine's career is taking off, she opens up to us about the struggle to represent herself honestly on social media, celebrating the good things, of course, but also wanting to let fans know her life isn't as perfect as it may seem. We all have different struggles, and we've all like been raised differently, grew up differently. Um, I feel like something that, for me personally, is like family issues. Like me and my mom, we go at it all the time. Like me and my friends, we like social drama and like relationship drama. That's like something that's really like bothers me on the daily. And I feel like it, love is important. Yeah. As much as we don't want to acknowledge it, love is super, super important for someone. You always want that partner that can make you feel like motivate you and make you just feel like whole. Even though some of us like to be like independent, I don't need no man, but like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but at the end of the day, like no one wants to be alone. These days, there's a lot of talk about sexual harassment and abuse in Hollywood and the entertainment business. As a young girl, have you experienced anything like this in the music industry? And what's your take on everything going on with that? You know what? Honestly, you guys know, like men can be like very gross. And so yeah, there have been instances where um, a guy will like say something or like touch you like, and you don't want to be touched. I feel like men need to, like know that we're not just like toys, we're not just there for you to just play with and just touch what has as you please. So like it's really intense, but I'm 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 very proud of all the women that have been coming out. I got left back in school because I was kind of hanging out in the streets, but I had a really good mother. She made me feel like I was made for something bigger. Shark Tank investor Damon John is the ultimate rags to riches story, creating his billion dollar FUBU brand off just a $40 budget, proving anything is possible if you work hard. And now in his new book, Rise and Grind, the businessman is teaching us how we can hustle our way to a more successful life. You're gonna tell me how to make a billion dollars, I hope yeah, today. Uh, yeah, I hope so, we do. <laughs> Damon, Welcome, how are you? Thanks for having me, I'm great. Of course we have your book here, it's out today, yeah. Rise and Grind. Yes. So in the book, you know, you talk about you know your success. You also interview some top people in the entertainment business and the business industry. Tyler, the Creator being one of them. Yes, Grammy-nominated Tyler the Creator. Yeah, yeah, what did he teach you about you know working hard? You know, uh, bottom line is everybody talks about working hard, but nobody's giving us the everyday recipe. And I was seeking that myself. What do you do with the uh, 1,440 minutes that you have a day? So I studied people like Tyler the Creator, Santana, uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones, and people also like my friend Kyle who climb Mount Kilimanjaro with no arms, no legs, oh no gosh. prosthetics, right? Okay. And I asked them, what do they do the first 90 minutes of the day, the last 90 minutes of their day? And what I found is the same exact answers, but all executing in different ways. So everybody in the book is selfish. They take time for themselves in some way or another so they can be better for everybody else. Tyler does the same thing. He sits in a tree for an hour or two hours a day and, <laughs> really? and he just looks out at everything and he writes everything down. But if you think about it, when you wake up in the morning, you're answering everybody else's emails, you're looking on social media, you're getting depressed because everybody else looks better than you, they're having a great time. Right. You get in the car, the whole world blew up when you listen to the radio, and then you get into the office and you're talking to everybody else. Never you thought about yourself. yourself. Right, yeah. that makes sense. Right. And that's what everybody in there is selfish. They take time for themselves, they take time for their family, 
health and they also take time to separate themselves and say what do I want out of life and what are my goals because I'm so busy trying to please everyone else. Cut to and me there's methods in there and techniques yeah. on how to do it. It cut to me getting arrested in Central Park after being in a tree for two hours. <laughs> yeah. We'll see how that goes. But you know what, it, it is interesting and it's so much to distract and it, it keep us from even thinking about ourselves in a healthy way yeah. these days. So so that's something, fourth book for you. This is my fourth book. Yeah. Uh, so you've got a lot of tips in general. I've got like, a lot of tips. But I'd like to know this, for the, for the person that walks up to you on the street every day, the yeah. one person that says, yeah. hey, what do I need to do to make myself better, to be more successful? What's your number one go-to thing? Invest in yourself and you have to educate yourself on no matter what you're doing. It's just like you, you know, I watch you and your, your great broadcasters and I, I don't think that uh, people realize it's not easy to sit up here and understand all the acts, aspects and what you do. The people just think you could just run off and just talk. You got the door slammed <laughs> in your face a million times. Yeah. You have to investigate what's going on. You have to be very accurate. You're interviewing so many different people and people just think somebody's going to give them a magic wand. But I don't care if you're on Shark Tank or not. I'm not coming to your house and taking your ass off the couch and saying, <laughs> I'm going to make you rich and famous. It's not going to happen. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so this book is me, myself, still trying to improve my life, even where I'm at in this world. And uh, I had to seek all these amazing people to try to give me more tips on how to be more productive. All right. Yeah, I love that. Um, let's talk Shark Tank this season. You've yeah. had a few guest sharks, like yes. Bethany Frankel, Alex Rodriguez, Richard Branson. Out of the newbies, who's the most shark-like that really fit in with the crew? You know, everybody's a shark like in a different way. Bethany, um, I thought she was going to come on there talking crap and doing the housewife <laughs> thing. You know, she was very sharky. She also knew uh, her brand, and she was very dedicated into what's in it for the people pitching her, and she wanted to dedicate her time to them, so I was really impressed. You know, nice. Bethany's been in here a few times, oh, and yeah. we had that, had that same moment with her. When it comes to business, she means business. She it's, sharp. There's, there's no drama whatever. And she's, she's a giver, too, yeah. you know? Yeah, after that, we, we finished the set. I, I saw her in Mexico helping the people in, in the earthquake. In Puerto and Rico. In Puerto yeah. Rico. Mm -hmm. side. My whole, uh, you know, thought process of her changed. Richard Branson, biggest hippie in town, but yet has the time to <laughs> send people in space, right? Yeah, a, you know, A-Rod, right. half his investments have nothing to do yeah. with sports. They're, they're gyms, they're, um, they're uh, you know, uh, uh, real estate properties, yeah. and I love to irritate him saying that he's just replacing me because he's my look-alike <laughs> on the show. So, okay, speaking of A-Rod, I loved him on the show. I, yeah. My wife and I watched that and just thought he was so great, and then you posted a behind-the-scenes selfie uh, with you and with him and J-Lo, and you, uh, you guys were all together at some point. We were doing a live texting there from, we from the, we, we, we were at their house, and we were, or uh, J-Lo's house, and we were doing live tweeting um, at the show, and uh, you know they're they just really a great couple. How were they together? And, and was she was she like on board with him? He had some like really fun moments on the show. Was she yeah, kind of poking she, fun she's, at him? She's she's been she's she's cool. You know, I, I, I've been around her uh, you know several times over the last couple of years, and she's always just a class act. Was she hanging out on the Shark Tank set during? She film? was on the Shark was Tank she? set. Yeah, oh, well, she, yeah, here and there, here and there. Okay, I mean, you know, but she has a day job, so yeah, she's, she was uh, you know had, had to go back to Vegas and uh, you know inspire a bunch of people <laughs> and, and, and shake it, you know. Yeah, and do her thing. So yeah, you're so cool about it. I would have been freaking out if J Lo was on set. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. It's, it's all good. Uh, but, but, you know, they're just, everybody's just average people. Yeah, you know, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good. I was um, really scared when I came to meet you guys. <laughs> I, I know. I saw that you were very nervous so when we walked yeah. in the room. No, Shark Tank, you know, obviously there's a lot of money and power sitting yeah. all on one TV set. Does it ever carry over when cameras aren't rolling? Absolutely not. Uh, you know what? Uh, we all really respect each other. You know, on camera, it's not an act. You know, we're like brothers and sisters. But, you know, if you and I were brothers or cousins, if we go on a football field, I'm going to crack your head open <laughs> on the football field. And then we're going to go back and, and, and hang out. Uh, it doesn't carry over. We pretty much know that Mark's a billionaire. Richard's a billionaire. We don't have that type of money. But I'm much cuter and smarter than both of them. <laughs> so we just figure that all out. And Barbara's crazy. So yeah. we all have established <laughs> what, what's going on. Yeah, you all, you all have this great rapport. And you're mm -hmm. able to speak very frankly to each other and about each other. Yes. Look, there's a lot of changes happening in the workplace, especially when it comes to women in the workplace, yeah. in every industry. We're Absolutely. seeing it in Hollywood, but it's all the way down, especially in big business and things like that. Barbara has received heat in the past from comments that she's made about, yeah. you know, you, encouraging people to use what you've got, whether yeah. you're a man or a woman. What do you make of those comments and kind of her attitude about women in the workplace? You know, however people d define where they're going to go in life, that's up to them. You know, if, as for women in the workplace, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that. You know, I was raised by a single mother and my father left. My mother worked three or four jobs. Uh, to support me and it gave me my business acumen because she taught me a lot from that. Sure. Um, I believe all this stuff going on, no matter what they say in this area, I know one thing about gender equality is being addressed and I love that. I have three daughters. Um, uh, a lot of the people that run my company are females and I love the fact that that's being brought to the forefront and that's a fact you can't deny. If you're making six dollars and you're making three, there's a problem here. All right, so I, I, love, I love that this is being addressed. Yeah, and Barbara's done a lot 
lot for many women on the yeah. Barbara is a huge mm. inspiration, and that's the number one reason she does the show, because she was left by her uh, her husband for her um, her secretary. Right. She turned that into a thou that thousand dollar loan into a big exit, and she says she'll do the show if she can invest in women and she can help them. Well, she doesn't want that to happen to another doing. woman again. Speaking of kids, your youngest, Mika, almost two years old. Yep. That's uh, a little baby still. Yeah, 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 <laughs> are, we, are, we in, are we in Terrible 2 category? We are. We are, Mika. She's owning it, embracing it. She is. She's all twos. about the terrible twos. Yeah. Uh, but she's she's amazing. She's so smart. And, I, and I'm I'm you know every night I'm watching Peppa Pig and understanding <laughs> you know how, how, to, how to hang out with her. Isn't it funny how the whole the whole the the point of reference for entertainment becomes kids shows? It's, yeah. It's you know. Just, yeah. I, I watched. You know. I watched. Um. You know. I, I watched uh, Sesame Street when I was young. But this Peppa Pig thing is awful. <laughs> Peppa Pig is awful. You know what I mean? Now you and Coach Shark Robert Hershey could have Daddy Playdate soon because he's expecting. We have Daddy Playdates already because you know my older girls who are 19 and 24 hang out with his girls they're going to Coachella this year so oh, nice. we they hang out already and then now that I had Minka Robert just tries to copy me as I always know. and now he has to double down with twins <laughs> how'd you react talk about his rise and <laughs> grind I'm talking he's gonna be up early <laughs> he's really doing how'd it, yeah. you react when he told you the news I was so so happy Robert was the second person uh, at uh, in the delivery room, you know, when Minka was born, and um, wow. he's just such a loving person and father. And Barbara was the third, um, so you know we're really close. And I'm very, very happy for Robert and Kim. They're an amazing couple. Well, let's wow. talk about your love quickly. We've been tracking along. We yeah. know you're engaged, long time yeah, girlfriend yeah. Heather. Sure. We've heard. I haven't heard too many details about the wedding. We yeah. heard that the location had to be changed because yep. of some in the Caribbean, the whole hurricane thing kind of. Sure, sure, sure. Do sure. we any ideas on location or time? Frame you know, listen. I, you know, I'm I'm just the 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 the. Piano say and the guy I have no decision making <laughs> you, you do know. what you are told yeah listen, I'm, I'm very I, I get yeah. it right you know um, you know when you're in a relationship and you're married you know if we're out uh, you know my wife tells me to put on my jacket I just ask am I chilly or are we leaving I don't ask any <laughs> other questions so I know nothing else <laughs> oh that's perfect I Great will advice. be there though and I will I I'm gonna take that yeah. the power to <laughs> lesson great. hard learned um, before you go, this past May you opened up about beating thyroid cancer. Yeah. How is your health today? How are you doing? My health is amazing and uh, not to belabor the situation, but the reason why I had my health addressed is because when I was going out and seeking this advice from people who are very productive in their life, I noticed the one thing they do is they make uh, they make it a priority to take care of their health. Jenny McCarthy would say that on Valentine's Day she does all her physicals because that's how she shows she loves herself. A lot of people here will say every single month they do something. So I saw of checking deeper into my health. I was having physicals and everything else, but I wasn't asking the question, you know what, I'm not feeling that good. Why, why, why? I did that. I found out I had a little a nodule on my thyroid. I then went to have the nodule removed. It was stage two cancer. Um, I had to deal with that after that. And then um, I'm now cancer free and I'm wow. happy. And I wanted to tell people because I want people to say, you know what, instead of looking at TV and seeing people sick going, I don't want that to happen to me. I want to be like Damon who have early detection and he is now out hanging out with Minka, fishing, drinking, partying, cursing out uh, Kevin O'Leary. <laughs> I want to be like that because I want to check into myself and make my, make my yeah. health a priority. And ask that is question. what successful yeah. people do. Yeah. That's good. Go after it. Ask the question. Be proactive. Thank you for sharing everything yes, about that, you. about Shark Tank, about Heather, about Minka and the whole deal. Of uh, Damon John, good stuff. And guys, you mm -hmm. can go pick up the new book, Rise and Grind. It is out right now. Good to talk to Thank you. you. And now every little thing that comes through my mind comes out of my mouth. And I can't control it. She thinks you're crazy. She thinks you're crazy. She's not following any of this. Okay, just because I'm not buying it doesn't mean that I'm not following. She's, she's awesome. I mean, she's just this huge, just like aura of energy. When you wake up, I don't know how she does it. <laughs> she's just like, like the persona that she has online is not fake at all. Like that's actually her. Hey everyone, it's JoJo. Welcome back to JoJo's where every single Wednesday I do real things. She's, she's the hardest working person of that age, a girl that of that age that I've ever met. And she's excited. Henry Danger star Jace Norman and YouTube sensation Jojo Siwa are co-starring in the upcoming Nickelodeon movie Blurt, which premieres on February 19th. Now, the young influencers have both ventured into the world of business as well. Jace with his creator Edge Media Company and Jojo with her extremely successful bow company. She's a great example because she's been doing, she's, she's, she sells like millions of dollars of bows. I bought a bow for as a gift. Yeah? To uh, my publicist, she loved it. But <laughs> if that if she's not wearing that bow at least yeah, once, I don't think she has yet. Just to prove. But maybe one day.
<laughs> Get it out there. And while JoJo is making waves on her YouTube channel, another YouTube star, Logan Paul, has obviously been in some hot water recently after posting an extremely controversial video that led to him being removed from some business deals on the popular video site. Paul has taken a break from his vlog for now, but Jace has some advice for him. Uh, I think if he learns from like what he did and he, and he and he like keeps going like I think he deserves a second chance I think that everyone deserves a second chance I don't think that he was trying to hurt anybody but hopefully he'll learn from the mistakes he made along the way and he'll he'll, he'll change and I guess the only other piece to that have you learned anything in observing what he's gone through yeah I mean I, I I guess I kind of was never really about what he was doing but but I think I think what I took out of that is that it's not just about um, the views and the money because uh, at the end of the day as soon as that goes you got nothing so that's what I would say. Okay the big question is do you want a piece of Britney? Well you'll be able to have one this summer. Yes Britney announced on her socials that she's bringing her piece of me tour back and it's coming to select cities in North America, Europe and the UK from July 12th to August 24th. Now naturally the Britney army flooded Twitter with their absolute excitement over the big news and UK fans are especially thrilled. They definitely are. Katie Banks says woohoo Britney is coming to the UK this summer with a little throwback Britney gif in her <laughs> glittering bodysuit from Toxic. We remember Never that. Never beat that one yeah. Andrew Bush tweeted, putting in a bulk order for Britney Spears at Scarborough Open Air Theater. Who's up for going? Need location so I can pick you up in minibus. <laughs> Sounds like a party over there. And slightly creepy. <laughs> Jody sounded the alarms in her tweet saying, excuse me, Britney Spears is headlining Brighton Pride. This is not a drill. <laughs> not a drill. And diehard American fan Bradley Stern says, if you think I'm going to shell out more money to see Britney perform the same show, which I've already flown out to see four times in Las Vegas, you are absolutely mm. correct. I can relate. I may or may not have stood outside her tour bus for two hours as a teenager to you did it I don't and know if, if she walked by hours. and waved at me she Brittany, waved at you that was our moment wow <laughs> more news Macaulay Culkin is making it very clear that his relationship with goddaughter Paris Jackson is off limits yeah the one time actor stopped by Mark Maron's podcast where he had no problem opening up about a lot of private topics including his life as a child star and alleged emotional and physical abuse that he endured by his father but when it came to Paris Jackson he quickly put up a barrier and just said I'm close with Paris. Yeah. That's kind of it. Yeah. He's also told Mark Marion, I and mean, here's the quote I'm going to warn you now, I'm very protective of Paris, so just look out. <laughs> I am a very open book when it comes to things, but like with her, she is beloved by me. Yeah. So he's uh, keeping that sort of in, in a mm -hmm. private area. And, and Mary countered his defensiveness, saying that he wasn't looking for any dirt on the whole situation. Yeah. And Culkin clarified that if they keep going down that road, it'll be a dead end, just because he, quote, loves her so much. Loves her so much. Now, the Paris topic ended after Marin asked how she was doing. Culkin just responded with, she's tall and beautiful and smart. It's great. And that was it. All right, guys, the 2018 Oscar nominations have been announced all morning this morning uh, this from the Samuel Goldwyn Theater in Los Angeles. Very yeah, exciting morning. I, I for know, the, the nominations Oscar are Oscar. in. This is very exciting. So let's start with this actor in a supporting role. We got Sam Rockwell from Three Billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. I mean, he was absolutely incredible in that. Yeah, he was. And you know what? Backstage at the SAG Awards, him and Allison Janney had this great conversation just in like the next room. Yeah. They have such a great friendship that dates back to their time together in New York City with, uh, with the, when they worked in theater together and things you like that. You guys talked about that. I didn't even know they were that close. I know, really and you can cool sense a, a real friendship among the nominees. Yeah, with that. other actors in that category, William Defoe for the Florida Project. Yeah, William Defoe, by the way, is so fantastic in this movie, and he's been in so many, but hasn't received tons and tons of accolades. When I talked to him at the SAGs, yeah. he was like, "Oh, this is only my third time here. Like, I, I'd like to be around really? more often, or whatever." Yes, that he was. He was so great. Um, also, Woody Harrelson from Three Billboards was nominated. Who I loved him too. I, I don't want to spoil if you haven't seen it, but that was one of my favorite movies, and his character is absolutely incredible. Christopher Plummer, uh, all the money in the world. Christopher Plummer, of course, famously replaced Kevin Spacey mm -hmm. for that last-minute reshoots for that movie. Richard Jenkins in The Shape of Water as well. And now actress in supporting role. Yeah, um, so Mary J. Blige. In Mudbound, which is one of the last movies I just saw. And she's fantastic in that. She is paired back. It's not the Mary J. Blige that we see on stage or, or doing music yeah, and everything she's else. She's talked in interviews about how this has changed her life, just getting into that role. It was and everything. a very, very powerful story. Lori Metcalf and Lady Bird, Allison Janney and I, Tanya. And everyone's talking about Allison Jan Janney. I mean, like, the, 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 such a harsh character that she makes, she makes feel very human and, and you know, brings 
some levity, even though she's so harsh. And such amazing choices, too. Like, she Gosh. brought it to and, that movie. And had the little b b uh, parrot on her, or bird on her shoulder the entire th time, too. Yeah, of course, Octavia Spencer and Leslie Manville also up for that. Now, actress in a leading role, uh, Meryl Streep. From The Post, a lot of buzz yeah. for this one in terms of you know, all the all the talk about the media and the importance and the role of the media when it comes to politics and, and things that are happening now. So a lot of buzz for that one, of course. Sally Hawkins from The Shape of Water, Saoirse Ronan, Saoirse Ronan, Lady Bird. Who everyone's talking about. Francis McDormand in Three Billboards and Margot Robbie from I, Tanya. Now, Lady Bird, here we're seeing it here, and Saoirse Ronan is a movie that a lot of people have really attached to. She had uh, had a big win at the Globes, and 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 the the whole thing for her has been this great wave of attention. And then people saying like, wait, is it going to be between her and Frances McDormand, who, by the way, Frances mm -hmm. just won the SAG Award. Frances McDormand gives this this incredible performance as well. She doesn't. She famously didn't do much press at all to promote yeah. the movie in terms of like awards campaigning. We'll see how that, uh, very that affects things. Two different actresses things. in different shows yeah. or two movies, but I love them both. Yeah, all right, actor in a leading role, uh, Timothy Chalamet from Call Me oh, By Your Name. such a good, good movie. Gary Oldman, Darkest Hour. Um, he plays Winston Churchill, and look at him. Do you see him at all there? No, you don't. He fully disappears into the role. Daniel Day-Lewis in Phantom Thread, they're saying this is his last role ever. Uh, Daniel Kaluuya from, uh, from Get Out and uh, Denzel, Denzel Washington from Roman J. Israel Yeah, Esquire. so that leads us to Best Picture. Now, three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. We have Call Me By Your Name, Darkest Hour, Dunkirk, Get Out, Lady Bird, Phantom Thread, The Post, and The Shape of Water. So, uh, three billboards. This was my favorite movie this year by far. That's my vote if I got a vote in it's, for the Academy. It's definitely it's a it's a front runner for sure. And uh, people, I believe, again, we're we're talking about Frances McDormand. People love the movie, really love her role in it, and how she sort of. Uh, uh, comes into the whole award season as just yeah. really an artist who loves the art and, and clearly isn't isn't doing it for the celebrity factor, but well, especially for that movie too, with how it, with everything's going with the Me Too and Times Up, to have such a powerful woman character yeah. in this movie, I think that that would I mean that's just so great, and she just kills it. Yeah, it's, I see that you're a fan, a, I'm, I'm a, a, fan. a little bit of a fan of Frances McDormand, <laughs> as, as are we all, guys. The Oscars air uh, live on Sunday, March 4th at 8 p.m. Eastern on ABC. Jimmy Kimmel hosting the whole thing, and we're yeah. very excited for that. This year uh, marks, of course, the awards ceremony's 90th anniversary. We're excited, uh, and we'll be right back. This is Jennifer Lawrence in People. This is Jennifer photobombing Taylor Swift, and Sarah Jessica Parker, and Liam Hemsworth, proving that while we all love the fashion of the red carpet, it's People who steal the show. People, the details make the story. Wait, do you know how old I am? No, I don't. How old are you? I don't know what I'm wanting to say, because I haven't been wanting you to, like, see me through the lens of my age. Yeah, but um, I haven't yet, you know? Because you haven't known. <laughs> of course, I haven't asked you. <laughs> I wanted to get to know you first. <laughs> How old are you? Uh, I'm 22. Oh, my God. Yeah, OMG is right. <laughs> Survival of the fittest on this week's episode of The Bachelor. And joining us live via Skype to break down all the jaw-dropping moments are uh, Season 20 cast member uh, Kayla Quinn. And we're very excited to have you here, Kayla. Thank Hello, you for joining Kayla. us. From Ireland. <laughs> Let's get right to oh, it. So. I Class, so, but we have to talk about The Bachelor, and so it was perfect timing to yeah. take a break. <laughs> um, let's get right to it. The world finally knows the age of frontrunner Becca M. She's 22, so this means a 14-year age gap between her and Ari. Now, after watching the aftermath of this big revelation, can you see her making it all the way to the end? Honestly, I think this really proved how much he loves her, or how much he likes her. He really just gave it all to his truth, and um, he's really infatuated by all of her mystery, no matter her age. All right, the entire season, Ari has preached that he's so ready for a wife. We know Becca M's very mature, but at 22 years old, do you really think that she is ready for marriage? I mean, that, that's a, obviously could be the problem here. Right, I think at 22, you're still signing yourself. And so no matter what she says, she's still probably too young. 14 years is a huge difference. Andrew, you said it earlier. So we'll really see if she can hold her own. And um, I honestly think she's probably looking for a boyfriend at the end of this, so we'll see. Well, at least Kayla, a boyfriend. Yeah, at least a boyfriend. Kayla, would you have been ready for a serious commitment at 22? Um, I think I was 24 when I did the show. So, I mean, at 22, I think it's possible. But with the big age gap, I don't see if they're in the 
I don't think they're the same path right now. So um, I probably wouldn't have been ready. I, I think you're right about that. Uh, that. I don't know that they're on the same path. But anyway, all right. Yeah. Despite the, his as hesitations, Ari gladly gives Becca M the one-on-one -on -one rose. There's another lucky lady who's also caught his attention through this whole thing. Watch. So I know that you said that growing up, you didn't see many love stories with people that look like you. And I know that I'm feeling that this could be the start of something amazing. And this could be our love story. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it could be. I think this is so cute. It's such a cute, oh, will you accept this rose speech? I mean, Ari is clearly in awe of CN. We all are. Sure. But is there enough chemistry there to propel her to the top? What do you think? I think they do have chemistry. You saw them, like, really getting into it. But I don't know. Compared to the other women, he wasn't as aggressive in terms of intimacy. So comparatively, I think she's um, in the top five for me. But I don't know if she's the one yet. I okay. agree with you about the aggression. But I feel like he's a little intimidated by her, which oh, could make it so a too. good thing, like a little bit of a challenge. But she does definitely have chemistry with the audience, lots of fans. Yeah. It's too early to tell about them, but Twitter is all about CN. Actually, as the next oh, Bachelorette, one user writes this, I'm uh, really going to need CN to be the next Bachelorette. Stunning and a Yale graduate. I am here for it. Yeah, let's say CN doesn't end up with Ari. Is she still an early Bachelorette favorite? Could you see that maybe? Of course. Are you kidding me? I love that hands up emoji. I'm so with the audience <laughs> on Twitter. I think she is so and she really knows what she's looking for. And it's so sweet that her whole entire storyline is about that fairy tale ending, getting that, you know, story, that picturesque um, that we all dreamed about as a little girl. So I think that she's, you know, a perfect tee off for the next Bachelorette. Yeah, and many people on Twitter are actually shipping CN and Peter. This user writing, yay, CN time, although I can't help but picture her with Peter. <laughs> that would be fire. Okay. I, I, I mean, a lot of people think anyone with Peter would be yeah, fire. Yeah, that's, that's uh, actually well, What really do you good think? Do, 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 could you yeah. see it? Jeremy, I'm with you. Everybody just keeps needs to move on from here. <laughs> <laughs> Enough <Yeah>. already. <laughs> All right, on to the group date. We're in Lake Tahoe, Nevada, which means the sun is shining, the birds are singing, but not everyone can handle the great outdoors. So take a look at this. I'm down to eat bugs. I've eaten bugs before. It's time to show Ari what I'm made of. Okay, to catch three. Oh, one, oh my God. two, three. Oh my God. It's been interesting on this group date. I kind of feel out of my element. I'm just seeing a lot of, of the girls here aggressively, like, seeking his attention. It's looking a little, you know, desperate. <laughs> the shot's fired by Crystal. Look, she's clearly not feeling the entire date after not seeing Ari form connections with other women. She could not take seeing that. <laughs> um, you have been in that kind of situation to some degree. What advice would you give Crystal when dealing with the drama in the house with seeing other women connect? Honestly, this opened up a big can of worms for Crystal. Like all of her insecurities showed. And I think my advice to her would be really just de decompress and just take yourself out of the situation. Just focus on your relationship with Ari. You're, you could tell she's getting so distracted, but I I remember being on those big group dates and you really see his connections with other people, so it's really hard. So I get she's, where she's coming from. She's getting in her head, though. I know, That's a bad thing. I really. Get, I mean, get out of that head, girl. Yeah. <laughs> Even after confronting a few of the girls and telling Ari her feelings are hurt, you know, she still interrupts the rose ceremony to have a private one on one <laughs> chat with Ari. She doesn't stop. Now, she ends up surviving another week, but did all of those moves ultimately hurt or help her in the long run? It definitely hurt her just because she's getting an even bigger target on her back. She said it was because she had the first one-on-one -on -one date, but I had the first one-on-one -on -one date and I didn't have a target on my back. So I think she's making a lot of excuses for being really insecure and just getting in line of fire. Boom. Yeah. Good example. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. You had that You had that one-on-one -on -one and you did not have a target. You handled it well. All right. Just final thing. <laughs> How much longer do you think Crystal has on the series? <laughs> At all. I think she has... I think she has two more episodes. They need a little more crystal drama because they keep getting rid of people. I mean, Viviana was my fav one of my favorites, and she's gone, so they yeah. just need someone who adds a little flavor, so I think she'll be around at least two more episodes. All right. All right. Well, thank you, Kayla. Always love hearing your insight. Have fun in Ireland. Um, you guys, make sure to watch The Bachelor every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern on ABC. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, guys.
so much drama. All right, guys, let's go to this. Kate Middleton <laughs> is speaking out about a cause very close to her heart. On Tuesday, the royal mom paid a visit to London's Roe Green Junior School, where she met with over 100 students and teachers before taking part in a lesson designed to help support children's mental health and well-being. Now, during the event, Kate gave a moving speech, saying she hopes to continue to further the conversation. Watch this. My own commitment is to the youngest and most vulnerable in the early years. Babies, toddlers, and school children, and to support all those who care for them. And breaking the stigma surrounding mental health is one of Kate's key causes, along with Prince William and Prince Harry. She helped create the Heads Together campaign to ensure people have access to the right help at the right time. We love to see the great work that she's continuing yeah. to do as part of the royal family. Yeah. And yeah, great cause. All right, well, we're back with our final check-in of our question of the day. So we asked you, what was your favorite OMG moment from last night's episode of The Bachelor? Aaron says, I couldn't believe Crystal interrupted the rose ceremony. I couldn't either. <laughs> that face, look, everyone's face when Crystal got the rose. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> people were really pissed. Uh, yeah. I, I saw that people were saying, I miss Corinne. Remember, everyone hated Corinne? Uh, and now uh, they didn't realize how good they had it. By the way, Olivia, or Corinne also tweeted out saying, like, there can be no more, no other. There's one Corinne, <laughs> something like that. So uh, Victoria Justice says, watching The Bachelor like... Mm. I was, I was <laughs> Steve, Steve he, Urkel to bring it all back. <laughs> I always love when these random like big stars watch The Bachelor and, and her, get so invested. It actually validates my passion for it. Yeah, no. Um, we're gonna be asking you a new question of the day tomorrow to help you feel good about your guilty pleasures uh, right here on People Now. Come back at 8:30 a.m. Eastern right here live. Coming up tomorrow, we've got more from This Is Us star Susan Kletchy Watson. She's opening up about the insanely popular show and her award-winning co-star Sterling K. Brown. Plus, former, former NFL superstar Terrell Owens and ABC's The Bachelorette finalist Peter Krauss talking this season's The Bachelor and so much more. We yes, can't wait to hear from Peter. them. Yeah, <laughs> All lots right, to thanks say. for watching. For now, we leave you with one last thing from singer, songwriter, Justine Skye. Enjoy. Bye, guys. What's up, guys? I'm Justine Skye, and this is One Last Thing. The last song that was stuck in my head was All the Stars by Kendrick Lamar and SZA. Maybe the night that my tears might let me know my last big splurge was when I was in Milan. I bought a Gucci bag. The last time I was starstruck, I told you guys, is when I saw Bradley Cooper. No, 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 I'm lying. It's when I saw Mariah Carey at the Rock Nation Christmas party. <laughs>